Hey, Joe. Joe, oh. for Joe knows, man. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. All right, man. Thank you, Brock. Hey, welcome to Joe Knows. And we're going to continue. We've been doing questions and answers. So I was just trying to catch up on things. In fact, I'm reading up on some more questions that I'm getting loaded up with. So I'm excited. So we're going to answer two questions today. And the first question is in the realm of the spiritual, talking about demons. So the question that I'm answering is, are demons active and are they around interacting with us today? And um, the answer is, I believe, yes, absolutely. So let me give you just a little bit of background on the whole demonic world. Um, there were angels that were created before humans. God, God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit always existed. So um, at some point in time, God created angels. And after, sometime after the angels were created, He created human beings, Adam and Eve. And um, at some point in time, before the creation of human beings, there was a rebellion in the heavens. Lucifer, who was an arch archangel, a very high-ranking angel, rebelled against God, was, uh, was tossed out of heaven. You read a little bit about that in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. He's tossed out of heaven, and uh, unfortunately, he had a lot of people that sided with him. And uh, somewhere around a third of the angelic beings, we don't know how many angels there are, but about a third of the angelic beings fell from heaven, were kicked out of heaven, chose to, to leave with Lucifer in the rebellion against God. And that third of what once were angels became fallen angels. And I, my understanding is that fallen angels are the demonic and uh, there are heavenly wars that go on right now. You don't need to get freaked out about it uh, but, uh, because it's always happening and you're really not going to be aware of it. But there are battles that go on in the heavenlies. And these are, battles are mostly among the angels of God and the fallen angels that have sided with Satan in Satan's attempt to overthrow um, the Creator, um, and God actually created, Lucifer is a created being. Um, so anyway, so I believe that those angels now uh, work for their lieutenant, their general, who is Satan, and they're on the earth trying to cause havoc. But again, I would not get freaked out and start turning over. You know, you can look under your desk blotter and is there a demon there, is a demon here? The main thing with the demonic is that they will, um, they do have an effect. They have a stake in what's going on. They want, you know, I did a series called uh, on the book of Revelation and I told you that Jesus wins. Well, they're trying to overthrow that. The only thing is the end has already been established, but they're trying to change uh, the fact that Jesus wins. They want Lucifer, a created being, to win and ultimately they will lose trying. But they're out here doing all kinds of things to tempt us, to um, distract us, to lull us to sleep, but to do anything to keep us from following God. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. And the best way to keep them out of your life is to not uh, do any of the things that would open a door and invite them in. And maybe we can talk about that in a little more detail at some other time. Second question, it's gonna be hard to answer this in Try and stay. I try and keep Joe knows to a 10 minute uh, window. I, I'm told I have to do that, so I have people that are telling me what to do on this, so I'm trying to do that. But the question becomes a person who is practicing homosexuality, if that person claims to believe in Christ as their Savior and Lord, can that person go to heaven? Okay, so the question is can the sin of homosexuality be forgiven? So I want to approach it, when I say it that way, you, I think you might know the answer. There isn't any sin that won't be forgiven by God except the sin of dying in unbelief, having rejected Christ. If you die having rejected Christ, then you will indeed have to pay for your sins. But there isn't any sin that God can't, um, that God doesn't forgive, that the death of Christ, the blood of Christ doesn't cover. And that includes suicide. I think down the road I'm going to cover that question as well. Uh, 
we'll cover that. Um, but homosexuality is a sin that is forgivable. But I do believe it is a sin. And the scriptures um, very clearly demonstrate that it is not the will of God that a man lie down with a man as with a woman. It's called an unnatural expression of passion. Um, and that includes women with women. Um, it's just not something that God, it's not the way God designed the sexual relationship to be experienced. So we recognize that it's wrong. Now there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that says, uh, lists a number of behaviors and it says that people who practice these behaviors will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And one of those behaviors is homosexuality. So it says if a person is practicing homosexuality, they'll not inherit the kingdom of heaven. It also talks about drunkenness and adultery and idolatry and I don't think that we would a person that struggles with alcohol that is a Christian I don't think we would question whether or not that person was going to be in heaven we would understand that there's an addiction there there's a commitment to a behavior that's destructive God says don't do it it's not good for us but we wouldn't question that person's forgiveness of their sins I've done many funerals with people who died because of alcohol and I have never questioned their salvation so why would we differentiate the sin of homosexuality. Well, I don't differentiate it. I believe it is a sin that can be forgiven by God. However, the problem with a person practicing things that God has clearly called to be wrong, the problem is not whether that sin can be forgiven, it's whether that person is actually a believer. You see, there are certain behaviors that when we practice, I'm not talking about stumble, fall prey to it. I'm talking about when we indulge in it, give ourselves to it, and it goes against the clear will of God as given in His Word, my question would become, are you really uh, a follower of Christ? Because Jesus is our Savior, but He's also our Lord. And the idea of Lord is that He's a King. And I'll tell you, if you're a subject to the King, if we, we don't live in the place with a King, but if you lived in a place with a King, and you were not subject to the things that that king shared, I would say you're not really his subject. And I would say for a person who practices things that are clearly called to be sinful, I just wouldn't give that person assurance that they are indeed Christians. I think when we come to Christ, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, if any man is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old things, the sinful things pass away, all things become new. So that passage of scripture that lists many different sins that people that practice them don't enter the kingdom of God, listen to what it says after it lists all the sins. It then says this, and such were some of you, such adulterers, drunkards, idolaters, homosexuals, and such were, past tense, some of you. Paul is writing 2 Corinthians, talking to people who were involved in all kinds of sinful practices and saying that before Christ you were like that, but having come to Christ, you have either immediately or slowly but surely turned away from those sinful ways and you've been following your Lord, your King, and also your Savior. So the person that's practicing really any sin, it just brings a question to my mind, do they really know Christ? Now here's the deal, I want to throw this other thing out when it comes to homosexuality. It is not sinful to have homosexual desires any more than it's sinful for a married man to see a beautiful woman that is not his wife and have feelings towards her. It's not wrong, it's what you do with those feelings. When I have the opportunity to work with homosexuals as a pastor, and I've had many that I've been their pastor, and I've been very honored and happy to have them my pastor. What I tell them is this, it's not wrong, your desire is not, not wrong, but it can't righteously be fulfilled, at least if you're going to be following in the steps of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, we got some more questions uh, that we're gonna cover next week, and I hope you're enjoying this. God bless you, and I'm looking forward to talking to you next week.